So, welcome to another video, The One Good Road here. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, cycling in New Zealand or bicycle touring uh, in New Zealand. Do excuse that there is a dog and a cat. You might be walking in or out of frame while I'm walking by. And it's quite windy, but um, anyway, I've written down a list of things I want to talk about. I'm not very good at following lists, but I'll give it a go. Uh, it just gives me a bit of an idea of what to talk about. Um, I might split it into part one and two, depending on how long this video gets. And my face is really lit up by the sun, but it's making my eyes squint. Anyway, so yeah, what is bicycle touring in New Zealand like? Um, First thing I got on here is, uh, where did I start? Um, I started up in Auckland, because that's where I flew into. Um, and flights getting into New Zealand can cost around 500 New Zealand, or sorry, 500 US dollars, roughly. Um, by the way, during this clip, I might put on annotations or, or a route or picture or video throughout the thing, but that'll just give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, anyway. So yeah, I flew into the country, as anyone does, coming here. Auckland's the most popular destination, it's also the biggest city of New Zealand. 1.5 million or something, but it's not that busy. I mean, the main street is quite busy. Um, but the biggest thing is actually cars, but I'll get into that later on throughout the video. Um, so yeah, I started in Auckland. Um, I bought the bike in Auckland. Uh, the bike I bought for 500 New Zealand dollars, which is about 250 pounds. So it's not that much. And the bike lasted me the whole trip. I mean, I didn't have to change the chain. I didn't have to change the tires. I got no punctures on the tires. Um, the frame was fine. The forks were fine. Just trying to think of what else was on there. Um, everything was fine, actually. I was so, so surprised. The bike wasn't that good. The brakes were mediocre pretty crap but they worked downhill they worked on some pretty steep stuff like 30 percent which is another thing I'll get into is that New Zealand's very hilly for cycling as you may have heard but anyway um, yeah the bike was reasonable I would recommend buying a new one personally because um, if you're gonna buy a second-hand one it might not last you as long and at least if you buy a new one it'll possibly last you a bit longer 500 New Zealand dollars will get you a decent bike and I think that should be your minimum marker and then everything above that. If you go below that, you might occasionally have to hitchhike to get parts. It might break down. You might have to like, you know, that that was bare minimum for me. And if you can go ab above that, you'll have a much better time. My bike felt very slow. Is the best way to describe it. it just felt very clunky. Um, it was a mountain bike. I made a video about it. I'll link it somewhere. Anyway, too much about the bike. Moving on. Um, how did I get there? I already discussed that. Where did I get the bike? Auckland. I personally bought it at, it wasn't Bike Barn, it was Avanti, I think. Avanti is a Australian New Zealand bike, bicycle New Zealand thing. It's a, a dealer for them. Um, and it's in, it was north, it was at North Shore, which is, you have the harbour, you got Auckland and then the harbour and then North Shore. So you go over the bridge and then there's four bike shops on one street and that's pretty much it. Auckland only has about six bike shops at the top of my head. There's a second-hand bike shop south of the city. Um, anyway, I'm just trying to spill out as much information as I can, as fast as I can, and that's why it'll probably be part one, part two. Um, how much, next thing on my list is how much did I spend on the bike, like I said. Um, next thing would be the flight, I already told you that. Um, and the next thing would be the visa. So, hmm. The visa you can get is a holiday visa. That's a very standard one. That's like if you fly from Europe to the United States or United States to Europe, it's like standard three months or six months visas, right? Three months is the easiest one. I mean, I think you don't even have to register depending on your country. You can Google search that and find that out online. Um, but for British citizens, it's quite easy because we have a, a thing going on. <laughs> um, and then with the visa I got, it was a working holiday visa. So that allows me that I can go and work if I want to, or I can spend 12 months not working if I want to. I just have to show that when I arrive in the country that I have enough money to support myself. And I think it's reasonably low that they ask for. I think it was something like 300 New Zealand dollars a month. It was something really low like that. So you only had to come in with like, I don't know, 
3,500 New Zealand dollars or something. It's pretty low. Um, Australia is much higher. Um, and New Zealand dollar is pretty low in general. It's not a very high currency. Um, so if you're planning on working here, you're not going to make that much depending on what your expertise are. Um, get into that later. Um, I'll explain the route soon enough. I haven't really explained that yet. Um, anyway, but I'll keep on the visa. The visa was 107 US dollars. I don't know why I work in US dollars even though I'm from Britain. Don't know why I do that. It's just a kind of global currency. Um, so yeah, that's how much the visa was. Um, the next thing on my list would be... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Daily cost. Okay, so I spent about... 20 New Zealand dollars a day on average on food and I spend depending on accommodation because you can I find I will get onto the people here but eventually but I find that people wise you can go and ask farmers for some help whether it's like pitching up your tent for the night or you know you need something some help like getting from where you are to a next town farmers will generally help you out Kiwis will kind of help you out but they do have their own problems which they're worrying about and like focusing on so you're not their attention you know unless they're cyclists they won't really understand um, but generally a Kiwi will help you out if you're in a very touristic area they won't help you I mean they, they just they they, te they treat you like another person like another tourist you know and it's a bit it's not really like a nice traveler thing but I'll get into that in a minute um, so yeah, daily cost was about 20 bucks a day for food, and that's like peanut butter, bread, very basic stuff. It was like M&Ms, people buy M&Ms a lot of the time. Everyone kind of buys the same thing and travels on the same road, so you might come across quite a few other cyclists. Bicycle touring in New Zealand is really big here. Um, that's why I want to talk about it. Um, and yeah, uh, accommodation-wise, you have dock campgrounds. Those are like national parks. Um, a bit like in the US you have the you know the national forests and all that so you have the Department of Conservation that's what it stands for DOC um, so you have DOC campgrounds which are about ranging from like six dollars all the way up to twenty dollars depending on where you go um, you just generally like sign out a form you put it in a box or something like that and um, they're a bit tricky to find I have to admit but just ask around and stuff and you'll you'll find your way you just gotta ask around a lot of the time um, and I will get into the sat nav and navigation that I use in New Zealand for offline maps, which you will need to download offline maps. Otherwise, you're just going to have to follow signs. There's like very little uh, coverage in New Zealand, which is surprising for how small it is. Um, anyway, so yeah, daily cost was probably maybe 30 bucks a day, and weekly or monthly, 300 pounds a month, something like that for me. Depends. Depends on your living standards. Are you going to stay at campgrounds or are you going to stay at motels? Motels are very expensive. They can go from 50 to $60. Dollars. You, um, that's minimum. New Zealand dollars, by the way. Um, and then when it came to, um, what are they called? Like Airbnb and backpackers. You have backpacker places. They're a bit like hostels. So hostels can range from like 18 bucks all the way up to 30 bucks a night. Wanaka, which is a town in the far south um, in the Otago region, and that's right next to, so you've got Mount Cook, you must have heard of Mount Cook. And then around that area, you've got Haast, which is a town on the west coast, and you've got Wanaka, which is on the other side of that mountain range towards the east. So it's like kind of on the east side of the mountain range on the southern Alps. Um, and yeah, so you have Wanaka, it's very busy, very, very, very busy. Um, and Queenstown is another busy spot. I really wouldn't cycle there if I were you. Um, try and avoid it if you can. Anyway, that's a rough idea on cost. So, let's talk about the next thing, number four, landscape and people. Um, I've actually written on here, a wrote, sorry. It's good, but dot, dot, dot. So, the people here, I would say they're really friendly in general, but sometimes you might come across someone who's got this kind of fake kind of friendliness, and it's kind of annoying. It's not really real. Um, and then you'll get most people, locals in general, who have been there for ages and don't meet tourists that much. They're, I would say, much more friendlier and open. Um, really depends on the person, you have to remember. Because you will get, you know, this kind of vibe where people are maybe 
I don't know, old-minded or, you know, and they're just not really up to the new standards of the millennials coming in and traveling around because there's a lot, and I mean a lot of travelers who come here. Um, it, like, no joke. People who just come here, buy a camper van or rent a camper van and just tour around and there's so many camper vans, it's ridiculous. Um, new Zealand has very few roads, so you will encounter quite a bit of traffic, sadly. Um, and it's something you really have to watch out for. I will probably talk about cycling safety as my last thing. Um, like wearing high vis and mirrors and stuff, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, people will generally help you. They will. They're, they are helpful, and they are really cool. They're very chill. But then again, you also get that other side, which are kind of not wanting to help you because they're fed up with how many tourists come here. It is ridiculous how many tourists come here. Um, anyway, next thing, landscape on that side, would be that the landscape, the scenery in New Zealand is stunning. I mean, from top to bottom, it's beautiful. You've got empty pastures, you've got loads of green hills, you've got tons of coastline, blue water everywhere along the coastline, um, beautiful mountains down in the south and, and in the North Island. Um, North Island predominantly has volcano mountains, which is just kind of like one peak on its own. And then you have, um, in the South Island, more of a mountain range stretching along the whole west coast, pretty much. From the Marlborough Sounds, which is up in the top of the South Island, all the way down to the Fjordland. Um, it's all stunning. I mean, they have the Lake District, really awesome. Highly recommend going there. It is stretching from, like, Queenstown all the way over to Tekapo or Twizzle, I think the name is, something like that. Um, strange names. And they're all just these blue lakes. If you look at the satellite image, there's even some of them which are literally light blue, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and whether it's a rainy day or a sunny day, I will have to talk about weather. That's a definite. Um, the weather in New Zealand can be crazy. It can be really hot and sunny. Like right now, I'm probably getting burnt, actually. Um, because the sun in New Zealand and Australia, um, it's just stronger. You get burnt in like five to seven minutes. There's like, if you go to Mets.com, I think it's called. Cool. That's the uh, weather forecast thing that they use the, in New Zealand. And it it's, tells you when the UV is really strong. Um, I would recommend having a look at that website. I'll try and leave it in the description if I remember. Uh, www.mets.com um, and that tells you when you should put sun cream on and stuff like that. Um, I would just cover up if I were you. If you want to go the cheap way, just wear a long sleeve, very thin, and uh, maybe try and wear white to reflect the sunlight. That's what I did in Arizona once, but I forgot to bring those white sleeve things with me, which is a bit sad. Um, yeah, but landscape's stunning, super stunning. Um, north to south, uh, North Island is more farmland. Um, and rolling hills and, and a few mountains, but tons of coastline, absolutely beautiful coastline. Um, and it's more populated slightly, but not that much because you can still get on a bike and get on a lot more. The North Island has more roads, which I will get onto in a minute. Um, South Island has a lot less roads, a lot more traffic on those roads because there's, no, there's no other way you can go. So yes, if you're in New Zealand, you definitely need to have all sorts of weather uh, be prepared for all sorts of weather, I mean, like, you know, ski gloves for, like seriously, ski gloves, um, all the way to just wearing, you know, a t-shirt and shorts, basically, because the weather can just change that quickly in a day. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy weather, I wish I could describe how crazy it is. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next thing. Um, oh yeah, and then south, it's mostly farmland, but the South Island has more of the scenery that you want to see, and the North Island is still stunning, but just has a bit more farmland and a bit more development, so it depends on what you want. Um, I would just do both islands. Just just do both. There's, there's no right or wrong, they're just really both beautiful places, and both of them are Kiwis, you know? Um, anyway, last thing on my, the last few things on my list are number five and number six. I didn't make any sense, because you don't know what's on here. Um, <laughs> number five, uh, pros and cons. Um, so I've written a list of like a few couple, a couple things which I would want to talk about with pros and cons of cycling here in New Zealand. I am really arching my back at the moment. Um, whew, gotta talk really fast to squeeze all this in. Um,